My website at glenbeck.com found a, a story that I'd like to prove Nietzsche is wrong, and Time Magazine asked the question, 66 is God dead? No, God lives, is involved, and is waiting for you to notice and respond. I noticed something when I, I saw this that we posted up on our website. So we reached out to the family, and I, I wanted to bring the family into New York so you could meet them. What I noticed was Jacob Barnett. He's 12 years old, and he is renewing faith that the power of a person's mind can change the world. I met with him earlier today in my office here in New York City, and I want you to watch him. Y equals e to the e to the sine of x. A natural logarithm of y equals cosine x, e to the e sine x. I carried Einstein's theory of relativity uh, in my back pocket for about a year and a half. This when I was 30, 35, and just read it over and over again and just couldn't grasp it. When did you? Let's see, when did that click for me? About the time I was 10? How many grades did you skip? Seven. You have a photographic memory? Yep. My gosh, what is that like? You can see anything in front of you, like a math equation or pi. They say that um, Stephen Hawking can think in three dimensions? I, I believe so, but I can think in four and five. But draw a cat. A cat? You want me to do a cat? Yeah, see? Can't do it, can you, kid? <laughs> <laughs> you know much about Thomas Jefferson? Jefferson had a mind like yours. He could write um, in two different languages and he could also write backwards. Can you do that? Uh, yeah, let's think. Where are you gonna end up? I wanna write a textbook so that it makes some of the higher level math a bit easier. I wanna be a professor at some university making the higher math easier. I wanna do research in the field of astrophysics. I hate that kid. <laughs> 12-year-old um, child prodigy, Jake Barnett. Um, with us here, his parents, Christine and uh, Michael Barnett. Wow. Um, Christine, you told me earlier, and I'm watching you, brother, <laughs> so you just, yeah. yeah. Um, you told me earlier today that you didn't know really until this week, that you knew that you had, you know, that obviously you had a, a a different kind of brain on your hands here, but you had no idea that this was that unusual? Not really until the world started doing these crazy things. I really just thought he was, you know, just another smart kid. Yeah. Yeah, not I, I, I don't, uh, I don't think so. When he was a, um, uh, a baby, how old was he when he was taking the cereal? Do we have the picture of the cereal box? When he was taking the cereal and spilling it all over the floor, how he was how old there? Uh, there is about 14 months. 14 months. And when he could start to communicate, he told you what he was trying to do. What did he say? Um, he said he was doing the volume of the boxes. He made equations. He was making his own equations. Yeah. I don't even, I don't even know what, I, I wouldn't even recognize an equation for volume, would you? I Not don't. really. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, you, um, uh, can, can he play any musical instrument? Can he? When he was about three years old, we were buying a gift for a lady in a little toy store near our house. And I was in a hurry. I was a busy mom. I was like, come along, Jacob, let's, let's get this gift picked out. He stood in front of a music box and opened it, closed it, opened it, closed it. And then as I was checking out, walked over to like a roll out piano and just began playing Beethoven. He had to push each key I did that first. when I was two. <laughs> so you're not that special, okay? Not that special, don't get cocky, kid. Um, um, he was diagnosed at what age with Asperger's? Uh, just short of two. Just short of two. Why did you take him to the doctor? Uh, he stopped talking. 
Uh, he went from babbling like a regular toddler, speaking like a regular toddler, saying I love you to his mom and dad, and he completely quit. Okay. Uh, saying I love you to mom and dad and also saying I'm looking for the volume. Vi of the volume of a box. Of box. And, <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Right, okay. But then he um, stopped talking, and so you freaked out a little bit and went to the doctor, and the doctor said what? Mrs. Barnett, your son has autism. And what did that mean to you? At the time, it, it just meant there was no hope. I talked to every doctor I could find. I talked to every therapist I could find. We don't know if he's going to talk again. We think he will always be in special ed. Um, but you knew the whole time that he was in there, right? Absolutely. And, and f did you have any clue that he was functioning at a higher, not this level, but a higher level? Yes, because of who he was before he stopped talking. Okay, yeah, the volume of the cereal box might have set me off, and the <laughs> piano thing, too. Um, the, um, uh, the message that you were receiving uh, now from doctors and everybody else, teachers and everything else, was, oh, look, his handwriting isn't real good. But, but you were saying, no, no, but, but look what he's writing, right? And so what is the message that you have, before we, before we watch him in action here for a second, uh, what is the message that you have for other families that might be exactly like you? When you're given an overwhelming diagnosis, do not give up. When children with autism have scattered skills, and you have these skills down low on the bottom, their handwriting, tying your shoes, being coordinated on a bicycle, look for the scattered skills that are up high. Look for the math and the history, and spend an equal amount of time doing those. And also, let your child be a child. Let your child play, go fishing with them, do childhood, normal childhood experiences with your child, and then always let your child do what they love. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you to Jacob and, oh, I've got a test for you. Um, I don't know any of the answers, but I've got a test. Um, <laughs> uh, but I want you to watch him and my, what I got um, uh, after just watching this story at the website um, was this, that when you feel overwhelmed, and you think like everything is like, there's just a, an overwhelming diagnosis. Um, watch God's handiwork. Because what we think is really bad, uh, we just don't understand. It's about to reveal itself as something amazing. I'm going to introduce you to uh, Jacob and let you see God's handiwork here in just a second as he as he is starting on his path to disprove the Big Bang. Watch. Okay. Back with 12, 12, 12 year old whiz kid, uh, Jake Barnett. But don't worry, Jake, someday you'll be like me, old, and just kind of like mushy right around the center. And uh, not so special. Enjoy it while you can, my friend. Um, his parents, Kristen and, uh, and Michael, are here, but I want to talk to uh, Jake about... I, wanna, I want you to show America what you showed me in my office today. Okay. Prove the it, infinite series is convergent. All right. Well, who can't do this? All right. Let's, all right. Got to pick out the right color. Uh, I want you. All right. I'm going to use an integral test. It's where I would have started. What? It's where I would have started. Just keep going. I don't mean to throw you off track. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so then, I have this series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it's convergent, then the integral of that is convergent. And if it's divergent, the integral of that is divergent. So I'm going to take an integral. Yeah. Uh -huh. to one of the sine of 2x dx divided by 1 plus cos to the fourth of x. Okay, have you thought of, have you thought of this? Uh, I'm going to chalk on this thing. I'm going to 
Just watch me, okay? Okay. All right, please pay attention. I don't, I don't do this very often for people, and I just want to help you out here. That's all. All right. Okay? <laughs> Serene? <laughs> I'd go with that one, America. I'd go with the R2-D2. <laughs> it only saved the galaxy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So what I do from here, I have to set this as a limit because it's an improper integral. Limit. Still T more. Roach's infinity. He, he does this, does, does he, he, I mean, he T can't sleep at night, right? One. Yeah, he stays awake learning this stuff. Sign. Like reading X with a flashlight or something? Or? Uh, um, he just takes it in his room with him. When he was little, he took an alphabet with little raised Equals. dots in his room with him. Limit. Came out the next morning and was writing in Braille. T approaches. How, I don't how, know. How, how little? I do uh, you. Before I stop talking. Wait, no, so first I gotta solve for that. One. One? One? He just taught himself how to write Braille? Uh, you know, and when his. Keep when writing, his, kid. When his, right, when so his brother we was two. born, we were stunned sine that X. he wasn't doing the same so things. X. When his brother was Which one and couldn't figure out how to read and write by himself. What? New parents. New parents, I know. What's wrong with you, Wes? Why aren't you playing the piano? You're two. Must be amazing. Okay. I, I want to spend just a little bit more time with him in, in just a second. Come on back over here, because I'll check your work later. Oh. <laughs> um, but uh, I want to talk to you when we come back a little bit about why you think the Big Bang is wrong, and then I have a gift for you, and you guys as well. Back in a minute. Back with 12-year-old uh, child prodigy Jake Barnett and his parents, um, Christine and, uh, and Michael. And um, I, I, you went into college when you were eight. I, that's when I started all in my first uh, classes. Right, okay. And um, you, do, are you, do, does he go to college classes now? And, and or who are your friends? Are they eight or are they college? Or who, who are your friends? Um, I have some friends from school. Uh, that is some friends that I kept on for fifth grade. And then I also have some friends uh, down at college. I practically hang out in the honors lounge and got some friends there. Okay. Um, um, I asked you today if you knew anything, um, uh, you know, how you were doing on history. Um, and you told me that you have a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you some books, and then I'd like to uh, either have you back or, or Skype, but I want to see what you can do with a few things. Um, first of all, <clears throat> 5,000 Year Leap. This is the, this is the uh, 28 principles that set us apart. And then there's two amazing men of science. Um, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson. These are the real series, the real Thomas Jefferson, real Ben Franklin. These are fantastic books. And then I just want you to see, because this guy's from Berkeley. I think he's really smart. This is a fascinating book, Physics for Future Presidents. I like it. <laughs> but there's a few things in here I don't necessarily agree with. That you'll probably spot too, but we'll keep it between us. Um, but um, that's for you. And this is actually, I told a friend of mine today that we were meeting. And uh, they said, the parents should read Autism and the God Connection. This is for you guys. Thanks. Thank you. God bless. Back in a minute. I failed to mention that Jacob was trying to, uh, he's trying to disprove the Big Bang Theory. And you have two alternative theories? Um, yes, that is true. Least two. Watch him. From New York, good night, America.